Hola everyone, this is Roxas1359, doing a bonus video for The Misadventures of Tron Bon. Inside this bonus video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over some of the cut content that's with inside The Misadventures of Tron Bon, some of the changes that ended up happening when the game was localized to Western audiences, and go over the demos that were included with The Misadventures of Tron Bon in both Japan and the United States, as the demos were completely different for both of them. So, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? First off, we're going to talk about some of the unused backgrounds that are with inside the Misadventures of Tron Bond. The first of which is of the storage room that is on the Gessel Shaft, simply with a slightly dimmer light and the contents inside the room being slightly moved, not too much. It's quite obvious that this was cut early on as there's not much of a difference between this image and the final image of the game besides the fact that the light is dimmer. The second area is of possibly a completely unused room within the Gessel Shaft. It is of a laundry room. It has four washing machines in the back and possibly would have been used for Tron and Teasel to wash their clothes, or in this case, possibly the Servbots to wash their clothes for them. It's unknown as to why this room was cut out, but in the end, the room was cut out of the game entirely, but can still be found on the disc. The third image is rather interesting. It shows the deck of the Gessel Shaft in during what seems to be sunset. Now, there are no changing days within the Misadventures of Tron Bon, although it is implied that days do end up passing in between the times in which Tron meets with Lex Loth. This would have been rather interesting as this indicates that there may have been a day and night system within the Misadventures of Tron Bon. This is strengthened by another image in the game of Mission 6, as the image for that shows that you go to Promiki Harbor at night as opposed to day. It's unknown as to why they decided to cut out the day and night cycle within the game, if it is true, but in the end, the image was unused as no day and night cycle is present within the Misadventures of Tron Bon. The final image actually is of two of the same images, and that is known as in front of the shower room. It pretty much shows a bathroom on the Gessel Shaft that probably would have been used by both Tron and Teasel, one with the lights on and one with the lights off. The room was cut out entirely from the game, so it is of no consequence, as there's probably no real reason as to why it would have been used, in, given the context of the game. One of the things that was cut from the game is known as the Pocket Station. The Pocket Station is a device that was released within Japan that's similar to that of a Tamagotchi. What it did was it had a small screen on it and would plug into the memory card slot of the PlayStation 1. You could then download or do different things with the Pocket Station depending on the game. Such games that were supported by it were The Misadventures of Tron Bon, Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, and the Japanese version of Final Fantasy VIII. Due to the fact that the Pocket Station was never released outside of Japan, the Pocket Station functionality was cut out of the international releases of the game. However, the coding is still available on the game, so you can end up using the Pocket Station if you so desire on English versions of the game by hacking it in with a GameShark code. Now, the Pocket Station functionality for the Misadventures of Tron Bon is similar to that of the mini games that were within the game already, and that was to increase the stats of your serve bots. Basically, you would download a serve bot onto the Pocket Station and would play small little mini games that could increase its strength, its speed, or its brains, providing an alternate means of increasing brains besides the cubes or bringing them on certain missions or doing the mini games. Due to the Pocket Station being cut out, some items were also cut out that affected some of the serve bots. One in particular were two items, the Beauty Book and the Cannon, which were removed due to being related to the Pocket Station. These items could have been given to serve bot 38, who would give you unique dialogue in order whence you gave them to him. Unfortunately, this dialogue was never translated to the United States or into English due to the fact that the Pocket Station was never released outside of Japan. Another serve bot that was changed while being localized over into international versions was Servbot 40. Servbot 40 has the design skill once you give him a designer magazine. However, the sprite of the designer magazine indicates something entirely different. The sprite of the designer magazine is actually of an adult magazine that you would have given to him in the Japanese version. This would have given the Servbot 40 the skill of H instead of the design skill. As a result, it was implied that 
the servbot 40 was considered a pervert and the reason that he was jumping on your bed was not because he found the colors of the room to be tacky or the fact that he just wants to goof off and have fun but more that he wants to sniff Miss Tron's odor. It's very obvious as to why this was changed for international versions so as to avoid ESRB and Peggy upscaling the rating possibly to rated teen because of servbot 40. The final serve bot that was actually cut out entirely of the game I mentioned in the project was Servebot 41. Servebot 41 was obtainable through a promotion by the magazine Dengeki G, in which they would give you a memory card that would contain Servebot 41. Servebot 41 was different in that he had blue head parts and had the bazooka skill. At the same time, he had the highest stats naturally of any Servebot. The only one who comes close is Servebot 27 once you give him the red head parts. He could become your favorite Servebot as well, overriding Servebot. Servebot 27 with his blue head parts. At the same time, what's odd enough is the fact that Servebot 41 has all of his text actually translated into English, so he was meant to be within the game. However, he was cut out for some unknown reason. Thanks to Mega Man Legends Station, they were able to discover a GameShark code that allows you to access him into the North American version of the game. Now that we've gone over all the cut content that was with inside the Misadventures of Tron Bon, we're going to talk about the demos that were released with the game. The international version of the game and the Japanese version of the game both had completely different demos, with the Japanese version's demo being nine months before the final game released, while the North American one was a lot closer, as many of the North American and PAL region demos show areas of the game that actually were in the final version of Mega Man Legends 1 as opposed to the Japanese version. We're going to talk about the international demo first as it's rather simple to go through that than the Japanese one which has a plethora of content in it. So first off inside of the international demo we have three separate sections that you can choose once you select the game. The first section is of the fight against the Yacht Crab on Monda Island in Pakti Village. During this fight, Mega Man is given a near fully powered up Mega Buster, having a yellow shot charge on it, and he is given the homing missile. He does not have full health, and he has to fight the Yogged Crab. Now, just like how the boss fight is, once you end up defeating the crab, it will fade out before you can see Tron flying out of the robot to a coming soon sign. Nothing else is truly changed with the boss fight besides the fact that instead of having voice clips, the Yogged Crab is entirely silent throughout the entire boss fight. This is during the time in which the voice acting was possibly not entirely done, so they did not include any voiced dialogue from Mega Man, Roll, or Tron within the international demo. The second section has you go to Kimatoma City, in which you have to fight the robe, the giant reaver bot that is with inside the city. It is implied that the lava flow has already been cut as the Reaverbot has a health bar and you're able to fight him. You're given the Hypershell special weapon during the fight and nothing else is truly changed. Once you defeat the Reaverbot, he drops the key just like how he does in the final cutscene and fades out. And then the demo ends up ending saying coming soon, implying that the Legends 2 was going to be launching soon. The final section of the international demo is of Forbidden Island, in which you're able to play through the entire section of Forbidden Island. During that time, you're actually equipped with the machine gun arm, which is not possible of obtaining normally within the game at the beginning, as you're only able to obtain the parts necessary to make the machine gun arm after you've completed Forbidden Island. That takes care of the international demo, so now we're going to talk about the Japanese demo that was included with the Misadventures of Tron Bond. Inside the demo, there are four sections, each of which are different to each one, and it is simply known as Rockman Dash Episode 1. The first section of the demo has you going through a tutorial section on how to control Mega Man. During this tutorial section, it's rather interesting to note that the city you're on is believed to be a slight demo version and early build of Rumia City, which is on Nino Island. On this little island area with all houses around, you're able to talk to Roll, Barrel, and Data. Barrel, interestingly enough, has his Mega Man Legends 1 model instead of his Mega Man Legends 2 model. Roll, Mega Man, and Data all have their Mega Man Legends 2 model. 
During this section of the demo, you're going through tutorial areas in which Roll will teach you on how to fire your Mega Man Buster, how to move around, and how to use special weapons. Special weapons being, interestingly enough, in which you're given the homing missile special weapon. However, the reason why this is different is because of the fact that the homing missile is a different color than how it is in the final version of the game. The homing missile is blue, matching Mega Man's armor, similar to how the we special weapons acted with inside of Mega Man Legends 1, implying that they were all supposed to be blue like Mega Man's armor. This was changed at some point to being different colors, as is apparent in the final version of the game. The second section of the demo has you going on Calbania Island with Shu, having to capture her pigs that are running around the island. You're equipped with the Hypershell special weapon and are able to go around most of the island. Interestingly enough, the subgate ruins that are on Calbania Island are not available and not seen on the island, but all other Reaverbots are able to be attacked and destroyed. Once you end up catching all the pigs, Shu will end up tricking Mega Man into kissing a pig. The third section of the demo has Mega Man going through a typical ruin style area in which his final boss is going to be an encounter at the first final boss that you fight in the final version of Mega Man Legends. During this time, the ruin backgrounds are of areas that aren't used in the final game as they're early builds of ruins. They're very reminiscent of the tutorial areas that you have to go through within the game. The final section of the Rockman-2 Episode 1 demo is known as Yakuto Kurabe's Assault, which is an alternate version of the Manda Island Assault that Tron ended up committing with a Bond family during the beginning of Mega Man Legends 2. Now, this one's going to be a little bit different on how I handle this, as I will be playing through Yakuto Kurabe's Assault entirely in another video. I won't be putting commentary over it, and to my best knowledge, I have translated it However, it is not a 100% translation. The reason why it is not a 100% translation is because I was unable to find certain areas and certain translations despite looking for well over a couple of hours. For the most part, I won't say that the translation is 100% accurate, but it is to the best of my ability, so I apologize if there are many indiscrepancies because it has been a while since I have taken a Japanese class. So, anyway guys, I'm going to end it off right here. This is Roxas1359. Stay tuned for Yak the Yakuto Kurabe's Assault portion of the demo as it will be uploading soon enough. See you guys next time.